All right, welcome back. Part two of landscape painting from beginning to end. Um, so far, I've just kind of been establishing big shapes and value structure using a burnt umber mixed with black and some white. Um, and I'm kind of trying to figure out if I want to, uh, I'm going to change some of the shapes a little bit. I don't like that tree that's kind of in the middle and I'll probably bring him down a little bit size wise. He's a little tall. Um, and then I may start incorporating some transparent acrylics and I'll show you why and then kind of get in my sky here pretty quickly um, so that I can start to uh, refine shapes and forms a little more interestingly. Um, and yeah, a couple of things. So it's great to take a break. 15 minutes, you know, it's oftentimes enough. So I can kind of come back and get fresh eyes on it and just kind of go, okay, this is working, that's not working. Um, and again, this is the time to make big changes, to make big moves. This is the time when it's a lot easier to move mountains or clear cut trees or whatever it is. This is, again, you are the God of your creation. This is your, your uh, painting, your design, and it doesn't have to adhere to the photo hardly at all. Um, I get most of the times photos and uh, even when I'm plein air painting, a lot of times it's just a jumping off point. So I'm going to show you a couple edits that I see, a couple different changes that I want to make. Um, <clears throat> and uh, then again, I'm going to start bringing in some detail, I think, and start to play with the uh, fluctuations and the value within the water um, and in the sky. All right, let's go ahead and step up to the uh, canvas. One more sip of coffee first. So uh, somebody is asking about the catalyst brushes. Um, this is what it looks like. It's got a black ferrule, which is nice for plain air painting. It's not as bright like the bright silver. Um, it's already got a big smudge on it, but it says Catalyst by Princeton. So again, for acrylic painters, especially the ones that like, like the refined shapes. One thing I also uh, kind of held against acrylic paintings is they almost always look very geometric because the paints dry so quickly and people often paint with flats. So it was interesting for me to figure out how do I get the organic soft edges that I like in my oil paintings into acrylic painting. Um, Michael, I'm going to say something real quick. Um, I, years ago, I painted with oils and I've been painted with acrylics for the last 20 plus years. But one of the ways that I'm able to do that, um, I also like the flat brushes is a mop brush. Right. Yeah, okay. I do use those a lot. Um, and then a mister really helps. I'll show you in the sky here in a little bit. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a little bit of editing. This tree shape just is drawing too much attention. I don't want it fighting with this guy so much. And I also kind of want that idea of space receding and it's he's taller than this one. So it makes him kind of want to come forward. So let's just, you know, chop down the top a little bit here. Um, I don't have that same color as the background, but I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to kind of get in there and use a little bit of white out. <laughs> it looks like that's where the sun is right now, I guess. <laughs> don't worry about that too much because I'm just going to come back over and color it here in just a little bit. Um, use this brush a little bit just to kind of chop in and there we go. The other thing that I noticed uh, quite a lot when I stepped away from it was again that that line Tamara that you were asking which one I was talking about. I'll just grab my paper towel and dry off my brush so I don't have a sopping wet brush so it's dripping. But if this is the line here. You see how almost flat this is, the base of that. Yeah, yeah. And I really stair stepped it, which isn't horrible, but I. Let's see what happens if I kind of somewhat straighten it out. I want to keep this, you know, closer than this comes a little bit. Um, 
down. And right now I'm using a, a cleaner edge just so I can kind of control the line a little bit. And let's take that all the way up to there. Might add a little bit of an angle to it. But again, what I really do like about acrylics is this is dry. That would not be the case with oils, even if I was painting with fast dry oils. Um, one thing I also saw when I stepped back was I really made this hole really big. And I'm kind of trying to decide, like, is that too big? Am I getting too much attention? Does it, you know, really compete with this? Um, and one thing I was thinking is, oh, well, what if I brought in like a tree trunk here to kind of break that? Oh, see, that's nice, right? And what if I brought in a tree trunk here, right? Uh, hmm. A little bit of focus and a little bit of interest. Maybe another one here that kind of, you know, will come back up in there. I like that. And now... Again, I need to draw some brushes here. Just take my paper towels. All I'm doing is just squeezing out a lot of the, the, the paint and the water, because this is a really awkward, straight. That line is really not naturalistic. So I'm just going to kind of mess that up a little bit. Let's just I, I think that one of the things I'm interrupting, I'm sorry. One of the things that for me is, is so special about painting is the emotional connection. And it's just like, when you did those trees, it's like it made it more interesting for you. And when for me personally, and it's your painting, it's just not a critique. It's like it changed it for me and, and didn't make it as relaxing. So I think it's interesting how everybody's so different in the emotions that it brings for one person versus another person. Yeah, absolutely. And it, again, it's experimental. I can paint, you know, back over that. I can change it back with the acrylics. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where is this tree going to kind of go to? What is its shape and form? How do I make it interesting? Yeah, I love like on the edges of my trees having this like kind of little more opening. Um, yeah, so that is, that's a personal, like, I'll oftentimes go out looking for things like that to paint with these negative shapes. And uh, yeah, we're all drawn towards different elements of nature, different elements of design. Um, I, you know, Don Bishop's painting was uh, presented. I think Michelle put it on our website and I just love his work. Um, good friend of mine. And um, he often is so attracted to a design element called the steel yard. And uh, it's it's interesting that we'll go out, stand beside each other and be talking to each other. And I'll look over and he'll be, you know, even though we're looking in the same field, painting, you know, seemingly the same kind of a thing that he will have been attracted to such a different piece of the scenery than I was. And I love that. I just... I have one question, Michael, it's Cheryl. Um, so when you're plein air painting, you you wouldn't do a, a acrylic underpainting first and then go over it with oil, would you? Because it's, you know, you're out there for a few hours and... Right, no, I, I, I go out, I've been experimenting with going out and painting acrylics, but then, yeah, I would usually finish them off in the studio because, yeah, I want them to have time to dry and to cure yeah, I, I a while back when I first started plein air painting, I would some sometimes do the acrylic underpainting to just get my composition all worked out, and then I'd do oils on top of it, and I was like, wow, somebody asked me, why are you doing that? <laughs> because I was carrying all these materials, and it seemed like I was repainting everything. For plein air, it just didn't it didn't seem to make sense. Right. Yeah. I I've been yeah experimenting with acrylics in plein air. Mm -hmm. uh, and I paint with a couple of acrylic painters who do do plain air. Um, and yeah, it's just, um, 
yeah, like you said, going back and forth between them is difficult because you're carrying so much material. Um, so yeah, I just kind of choose one or the other. And the, a lot of times when I go out plein air painting, Cheryl, I just am looking for uh, design and values. I'm not, you know, trying to figure out all the color. Sometimes I'm just literally going out and chasing color just so that I can learn color better and uh, just getting rid of those lines there. I'm curious what's going to happen when I come across to paint the sky. This is bluey gray that I'm now painting against that kind of pinkish background, what it's going to do, but might just have to paint it more opaquely. But yeah, so I can use these acrylics really quickly just to kind of come in and start carving out shapes. You saw how I chopped the tree, how I'm refining that line. Um, Do you think you would need to put just as a safeguard to put uh, some of those colors in the, ref you're just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I should. Um, definitely. Michael, yeah. I have a question. Can there be two fo more than one focal point in the painting? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't see why not. You might want to have one that's heavier than another one or stronger, but yeah, I don't mind. And I mean, right now, this is the focal point, isn't it? I mean, yeah. really kind of leads yeah. us into that. And in the photo, I feel like the focal point's more in here. And that's what I'm trying to kind of decide, you know, it's up to me mm -hmm. to do that, but there is a lot of action and small, you know, small, strong, contrasty points in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't see anything wrong as long as they're working together, oh. right? This, you know what I mean? They're, they're leading you into each other back and forth and around. And the yeah. truth is you know, nature oftentimes does give us more than one focal point. Um, so I don't worry about that too, too much, but I do think about like, how's the eye supposed to move? Where do I want the viewer to look? Yeah. I feel like, for example, if I was kayaking, if on that left focal point, if it had at some point, whether on the bushes or in the water, a little more brightness, just a tiny bit, that, that then it would draw your attention there and then over to the right. Right. And maybe I could like bring a hole through here a little bit to kind of bring us back through um, a little bit, you know, maybe even if it's kind of in the foliage that's behind it. But yeah, that's again, what I really like about acrylics is that I'm just kind of feeling it out at this stage. And, you know, there's, I've made some choices, but not so very many. Um, but I can't change my mind. Do you think that big round uh, bush next to the big tree, yeah, is kind of blocking the path? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I need to get in there and chop him up. He's going to have some pretty strong light hitting across this side of him. I don't know if that would help. You know, bring that into the light. I have a... Yeah, maybe I want to chop him down. I mean, I don't even know if he's useful. He's a kind of awkward shape. I wish I would have kind of analyzed that more when I was doing some of my editing. So let's see. Let's, let's because we got acrylics. Oops, let me do the, finish the water while I kind of got to... I'm just going to...
Also, I looked up the steel yard design element. I'm not familiar with that. Is that kind of what you're doing now, trying to decide where and how to balance things? Yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah, the steel yard would oftentimes be very strong on one side or the left, the right side or the left with a kind of an L formation. Um, actually, we'll talk about that uh, next class. I'm going to be talking about design armatures or uh, oh. design um, structures that we can lay our paintings into. Um, right now, we kind of have almost kind of a spiraling structure or... And so I'm kind of, I can decide, like, do I keep that going with the clouds, you know, creating angles? Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some um a color called burnt umber light and i'm going to use this to kind of create a little bit of a still wetted color and i'm going to retain it so that i can come back in with my detail because what i want to do is um give this kind of its backlit feeling a little more and i want to start getting in that sky and maybe what i'll use is a transparent yellow iron oxide for some of that sky color, just so we get a feeling across. What I'll do is bring in some of this, um, bring in some of this, uh-oh, that line's gonna be hard to get rid of. Um, what was I just saying? I'm gonna bring in some of that transparent burnt umber. I'm gonna put an area kind of around these it's going to kind of warm it up let's not use this brush if you need to use this brush So I'm just going to kind of warm up a little bit where the light might be hitting. Or getting behind. And then I'm going to use my sky to kind of come back in and give us a feeling of the warmth and the light and also hopefully to um, use it to carve in and start building into some of these shapes a little bit. So it's a transparent color, so I'm not too worried about kind of just smashing it all over because I can see through it. I've got my values established. And then what I might do too, so next week we will be talking about the design armatures and how we might use some of those. And then I was thinking that um, for those of you who would be interested, I can show you how I would come back into this with oils for the oil painters in the group. So that, that way we can come back in and actually get color and temperature shifts in here a little bit better. So let me know as we get towards the end of the class if that's something that you would like to see getting even messier than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, because this class is all about start to finish, right? Yeah, exactly. I like that idea. Great. All right. That's the plan. Then I'll just get this as far as I can, getting as much information as I can with the acrylics. With the idea that I will be able to, you know, like, oh, and the other thing I want to do really quickly is I'm going to try editing this bush, like Michelle pointed out here. And let's see if I can make something a little more interesting there. Um, what happens if 
that bush isn't even there. What happens if these light rays on the fog? Thank you, acrylics, for making changes so quick and easy. Wow. Yeah, it looks nice. Does that look better, you guys? Does that look yeah. better? better balance, yeah. Better balance, good. And a little more easy for our eyes to move across. Yeah, I like that better. Phew. Good job, Michelle. I think that's who mentioned that. I have a good teacher. Takes a village. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got some yellow oxide out. I'll mix that with a little bit of that transparent burnt umber or burnt umber light. So I'm using fairly transparent colors. I'm just going to kind of Again, do like I just did with those trees, but I'm just going to warm up the periphery one more time. It always feels like, oh man, one step forward, two steps back, but knowing that I'm going to be able to, I'm just working out ideas, just refining. It's again, better now than later. Because nothing is dear. No big, huge, permanent decisions have been made. Now I can begin to feel the light a little bit, the warmth. Smarter person would pick up a smaller brush, but. Michael, what color do you have in there with the white? A little bit of a uh, transparent yellow iron oxide. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's just a nice, warm, transparent. It's a little browner than the Indian yellow. I also have some Indian yellow I might squeeze out here in just a little bit. Right now, I'm just mixing up a nice pile of... Um, that transparent oxide and white. And I'm gonna use it as my carving color here a little bit. And let's figure out our sky. Are those golden brand paints? They are golden, yeah. Okay. But I have all sorts of different, I've got golden and Liquitex and Utrecht. All, all out here. Hopefully it's okay to mix them all. Never even really thought about that. It's okay with oils to mix them. Had you, excuse me, did you prime that your board with, uh, you said a pink, like a whitish pink or something? Yeah, it's a whitish pink. Um, or... 
No, I think it's actually burnt umber. Oh, okay. Really okay. Kind of white. And you said transparent yellow oxide is warmer than the Indian yellow? No, it's browner. It's br oh, browner. Okay. Dirtier. Dirtier. Kind of like a semi-transparent um, yellow ochre almost. Oh, okay. I've never tried that. It sounds like a great color. Yeah, it's nice. I, I love using it for glazing and things when I don't want that super strong, strong color of the... Uh, of the Indian yellow. Hey, Michael, are you painting on a canvas or some kind of board? No, it's a board. Yeah, it's just a birch panel with probably three or four coats of gesso. And then my last coat of gesso, I mixed a bit of burnt umber in there. Um, and it was actually left over from another couple projects I'm working on. So I just kind of went ahead and used it on a couple different boards and thought, you know what, that that pinkish color might look pretty okay as a background color to uh, this design, this trees. So you can kind of see how I'm just kind of tapping in there and just kind of carving out some shapes, making these trees a little, hopefully a little more interesting. Michael, I have a question. Please. Uh, so once the painting is finished, should it look like a original reference picture uh, uh, or it should look slightly different? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Uh, once the painting is finished, should it look like uh, the reference photo or it should look different as a painting? Well, um, I'm hoping that it looks different as a painting, but it's kind of up to you. There's, you know, if you're learning and trying to learn how to replicate colors and different shapes, there's nothing wrong with copying a paint, a photo. Mm -hmm. um, I generally never find photos to be all the things I want. So I will usually, you know, modify them. Oh. And move things around and combine different references yeah. and all the different things. So I'm just trying to create a little bit of a feeling of some movement. I'm going to go ahead and I know my sun's coming from this side, so it needs to be a little brighter and got a bunch of hairs over here. Got to get out. This tree is trying to peek through that I chopped down over here. So get a little thicker paint there. Gosh, it really wants to come through. I'm going to go ahead and darken the top left side of my sky away from the sunlight a little bit. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of my darker color. A little bit of a mist. So it stays wet, gives me a little bit of working time. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those mop brushes that we were talking about here. Try 
try and pick out the hairs as I see them with all these cheap brushes. That is definitely one of the tough parts. Just dipping a tiny bit of my medium that I made up there with the. Uh... I thought you're upstairs. Mister is great if you want to get rid of hard edges or want to do some blending. So the only thing on your brush right now is the the medium. Tiny bit, like I just barely dipped it to keep it wet, and then I'm um, yeah, I'm just kind of using that paint that's there. I found it. Is that the the clear the yeah, the, the, air, the airbrush and the clears. Yeah, basically. Okay, thank you. But yeah, just kind of creating kind of a soft. That's nice. Transition. You want to fluctuate your your uh, pressure as well. So you know some areas. But boy, is it. These, this is a, just a really, really cheap old mop brush. I think it's one of my daughter's old brushes again. And uh, it likes to uh, leave its hairs behind a lot. Really wants to let you know that it was here. You want to make sure you keep your acrylic brushes separate from your oil brushes, right? Yeah, for sure, especially within the same day. There's some of my beat up ones, like these shot brushes. I just go back and forth with them because um, I don't care about them. In fact, oftentimes the rougher and meaner they get. Sheesh, come on, hair. There we go. Yeah, so many hairs in here. Do you use the the brush soap, Michael? I I use always use it, but I was just wondering if you use it as well. Uh, I have a couple of different ones that I use. Yeah, um, I have a magic brush, magic something or other that I use the most. Um, I for my oil paints, I oftentimes use a, actually a floor cleaner. Um, but if it's oil soap. What's that? Yeah, the Murphy's oil soap. Murphy's oil soap. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the main one I use for my oils. Um, I use the magic brush cleaner usually when I'm, I've been really mean to my brushes for too long or left them sit out, unfortunately. Would you mind repeating the um, what you use for the oils? I, I didn't miss the, I missed the name of that soap. Uh, let's have a look. Well, Murphy's oil soap. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Works. Yeah. And then, oh, it's called Bristle Magic. And I just buy the big old huge jug of it. And that's one you can let it sit like overnight. And it works great for acrylics or oils. For acrylics, does just regular soap and water work too? Or should we get a, a special one? They're good about cleaning them in time. And then, yeah, here's the Murphy's oil soap. No, I I mean, for years and years and years, I was just using dish soap. All right. Things are kind of starting to fall into place a little bit here, I feel like. You can see, I, I mean, is this making sense with the acrylics? I'm just going back and forth. I can 
use it to carve in. That's another reason I like the limited palette though, is because where I want to crop in or cut, you know, trees down or whatever else, I'm not having to, you know, remix all these little colors. I, I would rather have my design and my value structure kind of established and then come back in and um, color it afterwards a lot of the time just because it's so much easier just to, okay, this is a dark, this is a light, this is a warmer dark, this is a warmer light, um, and just kind of figure that out. Now you see those warms, when I come back over it with some of the darks, how it, uh, kind of creates a uh, area just around the outsides of it. So it really creates this kind of nice feeling of like a back glow. So see this area here, the light's actually coming from coming from behind and across the top. So it wouldn't be getting into this part of the tree as much. So let's get back in and get those darks back. <laughs> let some of that trickle through and across the top and kind of like it's permeating through where the brush is becoming a little thinner. There's a little, you know, more, less leaves kind of towards the perimeter. Um, the trick for making the sky holes look authentic is any other tips? <laughs> Is what? This, you know, the trick for making sky holes look authentic. Any, any tips on that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, let's do it here in a little bit. Um, let's bring some in. Uh, but the key is that they're usually a little darker than the sky. The, uh, the sky in, in the sky hole is a little darker. In the, the sky in the sky holes is darker than the sky itself okay, because yeah. less light is getting in there usually. The bigger the sky hole, the brighter it can be. The smaller the sky hole, usually the darker it will be. Um, the other thing is just making sure that you don't have the same mark over and over and over. I, I see so often with students where they'll you know have one brush. Let's just say I'm going to make sky holes here. And they'll just be like, okay, there's a sky hole here, here, and here. And all of a sudden, you just get this real boring repetition, right? So, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're actually looking at the sky hole. What is it that makes it interesting? What is, you know, giving it some character? Um, also, those are... Is it, should it be a little, light, a little bit of cooler? Right? See how it all... I'm sorry. Yeah, oftentimes I actually make them a little bit warmer, like the, you know, more brown or red or whatever, just like I do on the periphery of the tree, just because I like that kind of glowy feel. Um, but uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll try and make some here in just a second, a little more purposeful. But yeah, the key is not as bright keeping their forms, like looking, you know, look at them. What is it? It's not just a dot, you know, what is the structure that it's, or the shape that it's making? Um, it's interesting that that black, I'm not using the burnt umber and the black is reading is so much cooler. Yeah, let's start putting in some sky holes. So I'm going to mix up some of that yellow, um, transparent yellow iron oxide. I'm going to add just a touch of my transparent um, burnt umber light just to kind of warm it up a little. And let's see if we can't make these trees back here a little more interesting. First, I'm going to invite a little bit of that sky through here. Those edges get really crisp. 
So that's another reason I have a hard time with these really crisp, sharp brushes is because, yeah, they just wants to make very inorganic shapes. Yeah, sky holes are so fun. The other thing is be careful with sky holes. Um, they're, they're too fun. They're like the candy of um, painting. And it's so easy to just really, really go overboard really quickly. Um, you know, if a couple of them look great, then a whole bunch of them must look amazing. But it's often not the case. It's often uh, less is better. Just a couple to kind of really help us decide the structure of these trees. Are you able to see these as I'm kind of poking them in a little bit? I'm yes. just kind of breaking up the shapes. I'm still thinking about, you know, where's the trunk? Where's the, you know, what is that shape that this tree is? So I don't get too crazy and blow too many holes through it. Let's try and make a bigger one over here. Yeah, they're so fun, almost addictive. Like, and I try to kind of save them. And then oftentimes what I'll do is maybe just take like a really bad brush and follow that up and just kind of mess them up a little bit so I don't have these perfect Right, so you see how that just looks more organic all of a sudden just by kind of chopping them up. A lot of times with, with oils, I'll do my sky holes first with my Q-tips, but then I end up with a whole bunch of exactly the same mark because the Q-tip's not very versatile. You can't turn it and move it and have it all of a sudden making, you know, a bunch of different shapes. It just literally makes Q-tip shape over and over. So it's important that I remember to get in there and mess that up. More sky holes oftentimes towards the edges of the trees. Just because the leaves are a little thinner on the outside, a little thicker on the inside often, depending, of course, on the shape and pretty fun.
hard to talk and paint sky holes. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to yell stop in a second because I'm going a little crazy, just like everybody does when they get into Okay, stuff. stop. There we go. Phew. It's a lot of sky holes. Mm -hmm. mess them up, mess them up. Some of I have a question for you, Michael. Um, yeah. Do you find that you're changing how you paint or the way you paint because you're teaching us a class? Or are you doing things that you wouldn't normally do in your own work just so you can show us how to do it yeah it would look a lot better if I wasn't teaching um just kidding um but it's uh I mean for one I'm not standing in the right way I'm not standing directly in front I'm standing to the right of my canvas so that I'm not in the way of the camera which is a little bit awkward and a little bit interesting um but yeah just you know taking some, I mean, when, you know, you guys ask questions, I want to be able to answer them. Um, and so there's some choices maybe I'm making a little differently, but uh, not, I mean, all in all, this is how I kind of approach acrylics, at least for now, is just kind of sneaking up on it a little bit. And then all of a sudden, once I really go, okay, yeah, now I've got what I want, then I can just attack it and just really come back over the top and uh and have fun with it and uh and um so no it's it's the same but different for sure and just talking and not when i paint by myself i'm stepping back constantly but that's like a radio dj having dead air right because i'm just you're not you're just sitting here staring at the canvas so I definitely suggest stepping back often to look at your painting and I'm not, so I'm not getting a very good judge on it. Um, if I like what's going on. I don't know. One of the interesting things for me uh, with with painting, with, with art, but with painting and everything is all about the, the emotional part that goes on. Absolutely. And it's always interesting too, just the conversations that we're having in our own head. You know, they're not always the most positive, but it's interesting that we just have that time to just sit or, you know, paint and then, you know, you're constantly thinking about the painting, but at the same time, yeah, just thinking about, you know, everything, family, life, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I still feel like this ray here is much flatter than mine. So I'm wondering, you know, I, again, I would want to step back and kind of look at it and decide. And when we're not here, you know, together, I'll probably fix these sun rays so that they're a little more direct, but I'll probably have to use some kind of a tool to kind of do that, um, make those nice straight lines. I hope that I'm not disrupting the class when I when I'm trying to digest up and understand you, but but it's like you you those things on the river you just said sun sun rays it's like to me that also kind of looks like where the water changes and there's an undercurrent so there's like to me there's like more to it than just like sun rays it's like where the water can change directions or depths. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be some rippling through here and stuff where, you know, you get different things going on. Um, 
So yeah, it's definitely going to be hopefully sun rays that help to tell that story of where that light's coming from. You know, and once I like, so this ray is coming across here and it's gonna be captured, you know, on the tops of these grasses here. So I can lighten those, brighten those. And so, yeah, what else can I do to help tell the story of what that light's doing? Um, I do notice on the rays there on the left, um, a black edge in the foreground of the rays that almost make it look then like a, a wave almost on the left-hand side of those rays. Yeah, there's like a little black edge in the front of the foreground one and the middle one <clears throat> on the go right, that one and then go right there and then down go and then up 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 right go now go right and then down down a little more <laughs> keep going keep going to the next there i see a dark line there that then it makes me feel like there's an edge oh that's interesting yeah it should be hopefully the reflection of this tree so I mean, it follows that ray. Oh. Is that just a trick of the camera, maybe? Possibly, yeah. I had a hard time focusing on the values there. I don't know, yeah. I'll have to investigate that a little more. Okay. Well, I want to go ahead and kind of take a break from this, and let's go ahead and spend the rest of the time, but I think you know, after class, I'll spend a little more time kind of refining this so that it's ready for oil paints next week. Um, but I want to, yeah, step back and look at it and try and figure out what I can do. I knew this part was going to be tricky for me. And I got to figure out how am I going to solve for that? Um, okay, I'm going to move the camera. Um, about bouncing. Um, so yeah, there's definitely quite a bit to be resolved. It wasn't as simple or straightforward as I had wanted. What I would do now, boy, those round, those transparent browns I put along the edges are very strong brown. That's interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come back in and reestablish, I think, the light and dark structure. And you can see some of those sky holes are super goofy looking, just little polka dots because I didn't get in there and resolve them in time, but I'm not too worried. Again, I would just think of this as kind of the beginning of the painting. I'm also curious if I brought down, anyways, there's lots of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get back over to um, us and our uh, images on the Padlet. But um, how was that? Did you guys see how I was able to kind of just build big, fast, dark to light? and rearrange and edit and do all the different things that makes it so fun. Um, yeah, I think I think this painting definitely has a future. It's just ugly as can be right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, awkward teenage years, as they say. How long, excuse me, how long do you have to wait for it to come in with oils? Uh, at least two days. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 24 hours I've read and then uh, 48 hours. So I'm just going with the 48 hours. Um, another thing I was reading today was a guy was suggesting a week because it's not a matter of the uh, acrylics drying because they'll dry very fast. But you need them to actually cure to get rid of all the moisture that's in them. Um, so that's that. Do you think that's the critical part of your brain saying it's an ugly painting? Because to me, it's like, I don't see an ugly painting. I th I see a really beautiful painting, a remarkable painting. So that's just a critical part of your brain telling you that, right? Uh, yeah, and I'm a mean parent. You're probably a nice parent. <laughs> I'm always like, you're going out dressed like that. Um, <laughs> and you're probably like, that's beautiful, honey. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I'm just joking with that. Um, yeah, I just know where I want it to be. And I know that it has to go through these ugly phases, but that is the hard part for me about painting in front of people is knowing that it has to go through these stages. 
But I also know that if I just keep plunking away at it right now, that I will probably make more mistakes than help. So a matter of getting away from it a little bit, a matter of looking at your guys' beautiful work for a little bit will help me again to come back at it with fresh eyes um, and figure out, you know, and just reattach myself to what was it that made me want to do this picture in the first place and um, things like that. So it, I, breaks are invaluable, super important. And I appreciate what you're saying, Tamara. Thank you. Um, I don't think it's a horrible painting. I think it's got a lot of potential. I think it's going in the right direction. It's just that it's in an awkward phase right now. Um, you know, I think it's 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 really you've got a lot more distance in your painting than in the photo. So, you know, that background is really going back. And yeah, I think it's really lovely so far. Yeah, it looks nice. Thank you. I think it's beautiful. You can wow. we can see the bones of what it's going to look like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. It's it's got good structure. It's a it's a good old house. It just needs to be refurbished. And I, I think my big thing is that horizon line. I'm now, you know how I straightened it up and brought it all down. Now I might take it back up with the light actually a little bit. Um, we'll see. We will see. But anyways, I, I got the points across that I wanted to. I hopefully that was interesting to you guys. Um, if you decide to play with acrylics, don't do what I just did and don't introduce a whole bunch of colors. Just do two colors. Just do a dark and a light. Um, that will get you a lot further. And then you can always come back in and add the color. I can paint transparent colors over it all day long. That's what's so great about the acrylics uh, or painting oils over it as well. So anyways, I'm I'm excited for it. I think that it, I had a great time and uh, da, 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 da. here we go. Let's look at your guys' awesome work. All right, everybody sees our Padlet page, I hope. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So I did go ahead and share a couple other images I took that morning. Um, so here's that tree. This is a this is kind of the same angle with more um, more of it. So if you did decide to do it, you can create your own edit. Um, this is, you know, without the yellow filter over it or anything. I, I shot that photo through my sunglasses. I do like these clouds a lot more, a lot pretty interesting. And it might be fun to kind of come back in and incorporate, you know, some of the greenery and other things. Um, da, da, da. This is the same view. That's that tree, the big one. But instead of being out on a dock, there's a dock just like that one over there uh, that I was standing on. I walked over to the bank and just slightly changed my angle. Um, and then I went ahead and included the original photo that I had. So that's it through my sunglasses. You see that I uh, took the dock out. Um, I just thought it was unnecessary. There's a little bit of a trail here. That's actually the trail that you walk around a loop around this lake. Um, and I kind of like that trail, but I wasn't sure if it was, you know, too many angles coming in, but um, that's something for me to think about. Um, and you can see here is without the edit, it's got this big right big tree kind of again. I always think of branches when they're peeking their heads in like that of being like photo bombing you. You know, you don't see the base. They don't make much sense. I did like the idea though that they stopped the viewer from going out. So how can I use that? So I took the, the tree that's behind it, this big bush and uh, oh, I see this is the top of the bush is right here. These are the hill in the background. Ah, that's interesting. Maybe I can use that information. Make it a smaller bush and then have a hill back there. And and I can see now from this picture that the on the on the river or lake that it is rays of light. Where right. it was hard to tell in, in the you know, in the one. Yeah, that is very true. Yeah, it's all about these rays of light. I mean, that's what I, that's what stopped me. That's what got me to take the photo was I just liked how the rays of light looked in this little bit of fog that's sitting on the lake. And then last but not least is my edit, where I lightened the sky a lot, uh, took out the dock, um, took out the tree on the right side. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, and I took out, there's some trees right in here that I took out as well. Um, what I may do is actually see 
where the bush is kind of got this shape to it. And I kind of brought that in, but maybe I would actually just get rid of this whole triangle here. And that way I've got this kind of stop shape here for the viewer's eyes. Don't know. So, so is that is that bright thing to the right, is that grass or is that the rest of the river? I think you said in the photograph, that's actually grass, that real light line right there where you had your cursor yep. right there that is that's grass cool. you can okay. see the path the path just kind of hugs along and then runs. okay i see it now okay yeah. thanks so yeah i've got to decide that as well so these are all great questions and great ideas and again i really like tamara how you how it brought back memories of a place and we can definitely use our you know our lifetime of information that's what's so neat about painting is it's not just this moment and this scene, it's a whole lifetime of life, of living and experiences and visual information that we get to bring in. So I think that's it. Yep. All right. Great. Well, let's see. Did anybody else share any notes? All right. I'm going to start at the end this time just because we're going to run out of time. Um, Shonik, are you here still, bud? Yes. Are you willing to talk about your drawings here? Yeah. Yeah, I just posted them actually. Very cool. Look at that. All right. Somebody go into the Arch reference photos are underneath. Okay. These are great though. What nice, beautiful little thumbnails. How big are these, do you think, each one of these? Um four maybe inches. Maybe like I'd say like four inches by like six inches. Perfect. So that's great. And was it comfortable doing something that size, like quickly yeah. getting your ideas out there? Yeah. Which one do you like the most? I like the um, one in the bottom left corner, but it's got like more colors in the actual photo than the top two. So I might start with one of those. Okay. Because it's there. Those are wow. easier. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, I can see this one's more about things if you know just by my initial looking at it it's about yeah. notes and stuff whereas the other ones are about you know have a good value structure a light and dark that kind of gives you the design um yeah i like the bottom one the bottom right one also the yeah, arches yeah, absolutely so what i'm going to urge you to do for your first painting shonic mm -hmm. is to i want you to have a painting that you're looking at that has strong lights and dark, strong light patterns and shadow patterns. And that's okay. going to give us our structure and our design. And I'm not going to worry too much about things. I want more important for me in this first painting is a good, interesting design, light and shadow pattern. Okay. That might be the right, yeah, that might be the arches one actually, because there's a lot of darks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and if you want to do it, you know, with less color, like just two colors or, you know, a couple limited color palette, and then the next painting, then we can get a little more crazy with our colors and, mm -hmm. um, but like something like this, I, I'll, I'll, let's go look at the uh, reference here. Yeah, so this one is a little bit tougher. So I'm going to ask everybody to squint your eyes. And what we're looking for is the light and the shadow. So what would make me a little bit hesitant is all these shadows are just broken up little pieces. So if we really squint our eyes, all of a sudden the shadow becomes this whole area, right? And then the light becomes this whole area. So by squinting our eyes, we can really simplify and look for what is that, you know, look at this light side shadow side right light side shadow side it happens within the rocks as well and that will help um generally i can tell this is almost a high noon because the shadows are very short mm -hmm. um taking photos at noon or midday often will give us nice colors and stuff but it's really hard to paint because it's there's not a lot of structure there lights and darks, it makes for a harder thing to paint. Mm -hmm. But this is nice. I might also, you know, I know you edited out some of the sand and you kind of went to these rocks. 
So I'd almost like ask you to kind of like even zoom in more because like these rocks are beautiful under the water. You got these gorgeous turquoise colors. Um, but yeah, this one, I, I, I just, if I left you to paint this, I just picture you picking up the tiniest little brush and just really mm -hmm. touch, you know, touch, touch, touch. Um, so if you can squint your eyes and really just look for the big structures, it'll feel like, oh man, it's so simple. I'm just, you know, but it really is important just to look for big lights and darks. So this one is like, again, it's kind of doesn't really have really strong lights and darks. It's a little hazier. Um, but I think you did a good job, actually, like your drawing and you got gorgeous colors in the sky and stuff that you could definitely play up. But, uh, you know, how do I simplify this? How do I make it interesting? What is the structure that's underlying? And what can I edit out? Like, you know, are these beach grasses interesting? Um, you know, especially not the rope, right? That's kind of... Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, how do I zoom in? How do I crop? What What's important? What's not? I, I can tell you're attracted to color. Look at that. Who does not want to paint that sky? That looks like <laughs> the most fun ever. I love pinky oranges against blue greens are some of my favorite color combinations. Um, and yeah, this one, you know what, Shonik? If you want to yeah. do color, this one, bud. This is because it's simpler. It's got great value, light and dark value structure. And then you really get to play in the sky. Uh-huh. I think, okay, I'll do that one. All right, that might be a first good, first, good first one. Otherwise, yeah, this one is nice. It does have the, you know, big uh value structure um lights and darks but i can tell that this one's also taken just about noon because when i look back here everything's it, you know look at that hillside right it gets quite flat mm -hmm. so um as you you know become a better and better artist and more your eye keeps improving you're going to want to start trying to get earlier morning or evening photos a lot of the times to give us a better light and shadow structure. But this one is really interesting. It almost has kind of an abstract nature to it. Um, and what I would do is I wouldn't be letting you get in there and dot, dot, dot all those little trees. I would just, you know, clear those out, um, you know, and just look for the bigger striations. What's the big forms that's giving us the information? You know, all those little trees just get busy and, uh, you know, dot, they feel spotty, right? Mm -hmm. Great. I'm very proud of you. Those are really Thank nice. You. Uh, and then overcast is, can also be really tough. It's nice though, again, if you squint your eyes, you can really see the darkest darks getting a little lighter, lighter yet, and lighter yet in the shadows. Um, and that really gives us a nice sense of depth and you've got overlapping forms. Um, you've also got nice lines guiding us through this picture. Um, so this one is could be really interesting as well. This one might make a really nice black and white. But have fun. Play, experiment. Um, the one that you like the most, I think, would be the hardest. Um, I think you should start with the pink sky one, because I think, you know, I can tell you want to do some color. But it's also got a nice simpler design and value structure that will allow you to play a little more freely. Okay, thank good? you. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Sandra, are you here? Sorry, I can't see everybody. There you are. Yep, yep, right. I'm here. Take a peek. So we saw all your drawings and your references last week. Is this the newer one? Three days ago, yep. All right, so this is your black and white on the canvas, I'm guessing? Yep, yep, that's my, I don't know if you call it a value study or the underpainting, or both. Yep, I would call it both. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, I think you're off. And, and you'll see I edited it. <laughs> see what I took right. out? <laughs> yeah, you took out the little tower of cloud there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So I knew that if I used oils, I'd have to wait forever for it to dry a whole week. So I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna try painting with acrylic. So, and I am so happy that I'm doing that because I feel so much freer with 
the acrylics because I don't have to wear gloves. I can just wash it with paint or I mean with water to clean out my brushes. It's just so much easier. I don't have to worry about ruining my clothes. I don't have to wear the same clothes every time, you know, when I like I do when I oil paint. <laughs> it's just so much freer. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many benefits to acrylics. Um yeah, it, I think you're going to have a great painting here. I'm very curious, you know, to see how you resolve the clouds and stuff. Um, you know, one nice thing with clouds is to have some soft edges somewhere that, you know, so it doesn't feel big and hard and firm. Um, mm -hmm. My uh, only uh, critique at this point, and this is, a, it's a little late now, but you put your horizon line basically smack in the middle. If I take my finger and measure the bottom to the horizon line and then take that same measurement, it's pretty much exact. So that is going to make the painting feel a little more stagnant or, um, you know, a little more quiet. And uh, uh, yeah, anyways, um, but that, that's, you know, that's just part of design and you'll you'll figure all that out. But otherwise, I think it's going to be great. And I look forward to, is it on a, like one of those panels that's wrapped with the canvas? No, it's um, a board, canvas board. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. Like it has cardboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, it seems like all, all the galleries, they don't like the thin wrap gallery wrap. They like the thicker and I don't like the thicker. So I... Otherwise, they want everything framed, and I'm so I figure, well, I might as well just do the flat panels and frame them. There you go. Yeah, that's I do a lot of that, especially my plain air work is on the flat panels. Mostly. Can I say something? Can I interject something? This is Cheryl. Let's hear um, it, Cheryl. Yeah, just just that one of the things, if as long as it's a flat panel, if you want to get rid of that horizon line in the middle, you could always cut it off. You can cut the panel off. I've done that. Yep. Sometimes to save a painting, but usually yeah. when it's done and I find out it's, you know, something's too late, <laughs> then I might. Yeah, no, same uh -huh. here. Just, yeah, you can take an exacto blade and just, and a ruler and go back and forth, or you can, you know, bring out a nice saw or whatever. But yeah, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think this is going to be interesting enough and um, fun enough. You maybe you can add some ripples or something to the water so that it doesn't feel just like a, you know, uh, complete. <laughs> flipping of the image with a line in the middle but anyways very nice I can't wait to see how you resolve these clouds and I'm glad you're finding acrylics to be fun um yeah nice job anybody else have anything to add all right would you go over the the reflection of the clouds with another color to make it look like more of a reflection or would you just keep it like that uh, oh no I think she hasn't painted the clouds yet I'm sleepy. Have you, you haven't painted the clouds, right, Sandra? No, no, I haven't. They just haven't been no. touched. And I'm hoping that when I do them, um, that I use the, with the clouds, that I use the paint, think enough, and, and then don't get too far so I can mix while I'm painting so that they don't dry immediately. <laughs> right. Yeah. You might want to, you know, look at getting a mister. Okay. Um, you know, and one of the stay wet palettes really seems to help a lot too. Okay. Fantastic. Nice job. Lovely. And Rajini, it looks like you have put a whole lot of amazingly gorgeous, well, paintings and references here. Um, is there anything, a couple of these you'd like to talk about more in particular? Or you... um, I like this first one, which is, uh, yeah. I, I was thinking of painting this. Gorgeous. Look at that contrast between that cool gray blue yeah. and green versus these vibrant. I, I like these colors also. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. I think you're gonna just do such a great job. Um, I would be I would contemplate, you know, editing off like this whole area over here possibly. Oh, um, I'm not sure, or you can keep it. And yeah, I mean, it's got this nice guiding in with the greens and things. Um, mm -hmm. What are you thinking about doing with this? I I was just going to edit this portion. I want it like, 
12 by 16, that type of that size. Okay. Sounds perfect. Yeah, I love this image. I, I think this is just beautiful. And I can really see your uh, painting style working out great with this. Um, let's look at a couple of your paintings really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can really see how your style would really feed into that 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 image really well. How pretty. Yeah, isn't that well, great? Thank you. I like how you have some areas that are crisper and, you know, have nice sharp edges and then you have lost. And I mean, some edges are almost, you just don't even know where the clouds start and where they end. And you've uh, taken that all the way around this soft edge and then really focused the eye into this area. Um, really nicely done. It really is a poetic um, way to paint this image. Thank you. I, I still have to work a lot with the edges, especially with clouds. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Uh, I think my uh, most of the time my edges are very hard edges. They are not uh, soft. Or... Wow, I don't see that at all. <laughs> I I mean... You have really gorgeous soft edges. I mean, this is so neat. And what a nice sense of movement. And then I love that you just went, you know what? This picture is about the sky. It's, you know, you put a little bit of landform in here. Uh -huh. Just to kind of tell us that, you know, yes, there is ground and not flying away. But it really is about this. The uh, uh, little sky holes I would maybe revisit, kind of cut oh, into. Oh, okay. The yeah. That one's really bright. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's exactly what I was kind of talking about. If you kind of look at these, they're all kind of football shaped, American football, that is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they do kind of, you know, it looks like almost an afterthought. You're just like, oh, a little bit of sky holes. And I maybe wouldn't get rid of this one because it comes right down the middle where the, you know, probably the oh. Uh, oh. And it also bringing attention right down to the edge of the canvas a little bit. Because that's, yeah, some of your tighter edges. This is a lovely piece, though. Really nice. And Thank you. you really good with colors, like keeping your warms warm and your cools and having that transition between them and love what's going on back here. This is just gorgeous. How they really kind of fall back into space. Thank you. Absolutely. And then this one, I really liked this. I uh, I think I even commented, yeah. I just like yeah. the spontaneity and the quickness of this. Mm -hmm. um, and that you're, again, you've got, you know, a couple hard edges, you know, not next to the edge, which I often will take my hard edges right up to the edge, which I think is distracting. I actually like that, you know, it's kind of hard edge, hard edge, hard edge, and that just kind of takes the eye back, doesn't it? And then you've got soft edges all the way around again. Um, yeah, I think you have a really uh, kind of a natural eye for um, movement and how to lead the viewer through the scene. Man, you posted a lot. They're beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. Thank you. you are a busy person. These are all recent? Huh? These are uh, a couple of months back. Yeah, boy, you're a painting machine right now. I love it. <laughs> but my my only problem is I use initially uh, min mineral spirit, and then I try to use... Uh, linseed oil and mineral spirit together but at one point in the end it becomes so thick I have to use more and more of a linseed oil. Mm. That's interesting. I mean you could use a little more oil. Oil will also you know make it um, thinner. Which oil? Linseed yeah, linseed oil or whatever oil you're using in your paint. I, I use linseed oil. Yeah, that's great. Um, and what do you mean that it becomes thick? The paint is getting thicker and thicker? Yeah, like the paint is becoming thicker. And uh, uh, I have a tendency of mixing everything. You know, I mix and then I correct it. With that, it takes more time to finish painting. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's a great way to do it. I mean, I, that's how I would suggest you do it generally uh, oh. a lot of the time. Um, that's interesting, too, because I thought, you know, by looking behind you and, you know, when we're uh, looking at 
you have so many kind of tonalist paintings as well. So you, you're experimenting and playing with a whole lot of different styles. Yeah. I, I like to paint clouds. Yeah, what fun. I really don't have too much feedback for you. Um, I really like where you're going. Um, you know, I, I teach a class painting trees, rocks and clouds or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, yeah. um, you you do something so naturally that your clouds look very soft and fluffy and your ground forms look, you know, firm and, uh, you know, ground like um, that. Uh, yeah, you've got a good instinct for sure. Um, not sure what you got going on here. <laughs> this yeah, <laughs> that should awesome. be it really wants me to look at it um <laughs> just because it's like really dark and surrounded by light so it really draws my attention yeah. and another thing is is that this shape this cloud this cloud and this cloud are becoming a little bit spotty you know yeah. maybe I connect them um, um yeah. look, i'm always looking to how can i connect my lights how can i connect my darks i'm mm. I'm, I'm scared of making things too spotty especially when yeah. i'm painting clouds and stuff um mm -hmm. you know same thing could be happening here is you know how can I maybe unify this so it doesn't look like you know a bunch of little explosions but one big wave crashing yeah yeah so yeah we'll, we will talk more about that but oh, yeah. okay beautiful, thank beautiful, you. beautiful beautiful nice job thank you all right Michelle I see you how you doing yeah that's just that was just under glazing perfect Perfect. So you took your, one of your little sketches. I remember looking at the four sketches you did last week and thinking they were all so nice. And now you're just kind of testing some colors and uh, values and temperatures on there. That's that's great. What do you think? Oh, it's not my favorite colors, but I was happy to get out my brush <laughs> and just do a little bit of painting. So um, uh, yeah, it's as always, it was a busy week, but I'm happy to have done something. Good, good. I would look to maybe bring in some more opaque paint and put a cooler blue or gray across this background. And then all of a sudden you're going to get a real nice depth because right now everything's warm. And uh, so you're not getting kind of that, you know, warmer to cooler. And I think that will just open this up really nicely. But otherwise, yeah, it's nice. And I love the, you know, the grass. And I, again, I've always liked your textures that you get with your raggedy brushes and stuff very nice very nice beautiful yeah and you uh you yeah you do a great job of keeping things nice and poetic and you know sometimes you really work into images but a lot of times some of my favorites of yours are your, almost your more sketchy ones that really make me happy and mary are you here Is that you no camera did you have a question sorry i just went flying by there I'm yeah. here, Michael. All right. Sorry, I can only see a couple of you when I'm looking at this view. So there you are. Okay, great. So you kind of loosely based that painting on this image a little bit, or is it a whole yes. different? No, it okay. was that one. Okay, so you took that and did these sketches, and then you came up with this beautiful, exceptional wow booty <laughs> little painting that is there's something special in here I, mean, I feel like this reminds me of you know uh turn of the century paintings i saw when i was in boston looking at some of the museums and stuff where they did these kind of nightscape uh images is it meant to be really dark did you kind of just yeah i was um i was trying to go for a night scene uh, nocturnal um and this is the first painting that I've actually liked just because I used that mother load technique that you yeah. told us about. Yeah. And, and that really helped with, um because every time I've done a wipeout and then added color, I've ruined it. Uh -huh. so, so that really helped doing that with the values and colors. I'm so glad. And what happened here and what make, look at all those comments you got over there, compliments. Um, is that it's got such a harmony to it. So I would think that's partly because you designed it, got your value and your design structure established, and then you did your mother colors like you were talking about. Yeah. 
and then you instantly already knew I'm going to have a color harmony and a, a value color. Yeah. Harmony yeah. Too. And then also when you mentioned um, siesta or fiesta, ah. I realized that when I'm doing what's a siesta, I'll try to do something to it to make it pop or whatever, bringing it over to fiesta and so that helped when you said that, that I needed to stay on the siesta theme. Right, right. You know? That's great. That's great. I'm so glad. And yeah, lovely, lovely painting. It Thank really you. has just such a nice look to it. Yeah. Where did, Michael, where did you talk about the siesta and the fiesta stuff somewhere? I've missed that. Is that somewhere on the palette, the padlet or something? Or uh, I think I probably just mentioned it in almost passing, is that right, Mary? You did, you did, yeah. yeah. So I just talk about like, for most part, for my paintings, I like them to kind of be more uh, siesta, more quiet, and okay. um, I want to, I want people to just feel relaxed. But there's okay, nothing. So it's, wrong. it's exactly as it what it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing wrong with a fiesta, you know, a big party and a celebration of color and light and energy. But I find that a lot of uh, you know beginners or a lot of painters, myself included, I will try to meet somewhere in the middle, and then you just kind of end up with a hyperactive, weird painting that doesn't have an overarching mood or feel. So yeah, that's that's great, Mary. I'm glad that that worked, and thank you for reminding us all of that. That sure. um, so yeah. Thank you. Just, hey, yeah. Michael. Michael, yeah. just one question. I was having a problem with the trees on the left. Would you improve on anything or? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my least favorite part is these three t trees being equally yeah. tall and equally uh, spaced. Okay. So that's just it. It becomes repetitious right there. Right. So I should have um, varied the shapes and heights. Yeah. I will often look for the personality that's in there. Yeah. Or or I will make up the personality that's in there. So okay. yeah, you got one that's kind of leaning out to the right, trying to capture the light. You got a little skinny guy in the middle there who's kind Great. of starving for light. And then you got this big, thick guy here. And they're probably also on, you know, one thumb or in front of the other. I maybe just even would cut out this guy. So you have a bit of a spacing here and then okay. a little more of a grouping here. And then you see this guy over here, da, 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 you know? So it's just kind of, uh, I really learned the importance of that by looking at a John Singer Sargent painting where he did these fence posts kind of leaning and every fence post in there had kind of its own personality, you know, it's an old fence line that, you know, they'd begun to kind of teeter and fall and everything. And I just remember going, oh, wow, he literally looked at the fence posts, each one individually and said, okay, I see you and you have a personality, you know, you're tired, you're leaning down, you're you know, a little more firm in the ground and in any ways. Um, okay. Yeah, great. Um, Lisa, these are fantastic. I so, don't remember what the reference was, though. It was one of your classes and I couldn't find it. Yeah, I'm not positive. Um, I mean, there's infinite fields just beyond my house. Well, they're getting filled in with houses quickly in schools and everything now, but um, This is one of my photos that it's based on or anything or if it's just one of the assignments but uh very nice i i mean i love the texture in your trees and the the structure and these uh, hay bales and uh lovely do you have uh plans for this one are you going to take it further or what's your what are you thinking about um great question i you know i i tend to be drawn toward the sky colors. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this was this is a real stretch for me. Um, so probably I should go ahead and um, pick some already. Use it just because I don't do a lot of the ground related colors. So okay. yeah, I'm. I think I might try. Although I kind of, but I'm trying to think of what you're saying about you know, don't let it be too dear. We have to be willing to get rid of our children. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh yeah i don't know 
Nope. Uh, gorgeous start. And is it two different paintings? Did you just do it twice? No, it's um, it, it just I was trying to photograph it <clears throat> so that uh, some of the detail showed up better because there's kind of a gash in the top right side of the tree. And um, it actually in person, there is more nuance, but it kept coming out in the pictures as having just kind of that gash. Gotcha. gotcha. To me, it bothered me. <laughs> oh, right here. I see it. Yep. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that can be tough. You can, you know, use a little thicker acrylic paint. Is this acrylic or oil? Um, I'm pretty sure it's acrylic. Okay. Yeah, you can just load it up a little bit, but then you're going to lose this nice kind of leafy transparency that you've got. This area here feels a little bit um, unresolved. Okay. It might darks back into there a little bit, but lovely. It really has a nice flow and movement and uh, you know especially when you're looking at the thumbnails it really it reads exceptionally well cool thank you all right lisa fairbank i will be talking to her this evening oh i wanted to mention you guys so lisa uh fairbank is uh has been in this my classes but she's also uh, my assistant for my mentorship group now um and, uh, on Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday of every month, I have a mentorship group. It's an extra fee if anybody's interested. Um, right now, there's only three students and then Lisa and myself. Um, so it's a lot. It's two hours long. So it's a lot more kind of one on one feedback time. Um, so if anybody's interested and say, you know what, I would like even more time, more feedback, more one on one. Um, I can post the link to that. I will um, go ahead and put it over here under notes and handouts. Um, if anybody's interested in that, just let me know and I can get you more information. It's through a program called Mastery. Um, yeah, great. So I won't talk about hers because I'm going to be talking to her in a couple hours it's from four to six uh, Pacific Standard Time on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Close, close, close. Okay, is that it? So Linda, is this one of your paintings? I muted you. Yes, it is. Ah, look at those beautiful colors. Um, I, I don't like I recognize the, the reference uh, painting you may have used. I used the one you posted that light real soft one right i love that painting i uh, do too it's yeah, the really cool. one right there yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i love that um beautifully I, done very just, subtle and you did a great I, job of uh keeping the siesta in this one yeah uh, yeah so uh do you have it looks like you maybe posted a bunch okay three of, them. three of them and i did i saw this one morning like last week and i just had to paint it but it doesn't look right to me it was the photo yes. so hard. what i'm guessing is happening is that the light is kind of sneaking through the hills illuminating the the skies and the hilltop is that correct yeah yeah so this is probably much darker down in this area yeah, I was afraid to make it too dark, but I could darken it. That would yeah, I mean, you can always just kind of blaze in. into it or darken it because right now it's cooler, whereas this is nice and warm. But if I took this and made it into a black and white, it wouldn't be a whole lot of value shift. Okay. Between. So I'm guessing the, yeah, that this would be quite a lot, um, quite a lot cooler and darker. And I think the right upper corner of the sky was darker in the original. It had more of that purpley gray, dark color up in that area. And then there's just these fingers of this gold. And I mean, it looked like gold in the sky. Wow. I didn't do it justice. Do you and have then, a reference for it that we could see? I, yeah, and I didn't post it. Um, oh. I didn't post it. I forgot. Yeah, this is one that if we had a little more time, I would just quickly take it into Photoshop and just see if we couldn't do a little manipulation to it. Um, 
to uh let's see that that green finger in the middle of the painting where the shadow of the cloud is I, it's like that's my my favorite part it's like wow that's yeah. gorgeous there you go really gorgeous thank you I thought I had a section for us. Cactus on the mountains out here, beautiful. Let's see if I can. And the greens in the distance are usually just almost black. And for some reason, I put the dark in, but I took it out because it was so foggy way back at the base of the mountain, just misty, foggy. We'll have like a dew in the morning and just like a hazy mist around the mountain the feet of the mountains linda where are you painting from um i live exactly halfway between phoenix and tucson on exit 200 20 miles 20 miles off the interstate are you guys seeing my photoshop yeah okay i'm just gonna do a quick um, let's just copy that. And let's just let's get a value contrast. And I'm just grabbing a brush that needs to be way bigger than that, otherwise it would take me forever to erase it. Oh, that pushes it back beautifully. Yeah, is that a little more about how you maybe remember it? Yeah. yeah. The mountain is huge. I I shortened it because it was it's I have to like reduce everything to make it look normal because if you look at it, the mountains are just and this oh, so mountain's like 35 miles away from me. Wow. Literally, and it's gigantic. It's huge. Yeah, it's, see how that just kind of bumps up the the um right? You see how that just yeah. doesn't talk about light and shadow very much? Right. Right. Be as dark as I made it, but that's even like halfway as dark versus all the way mm -hmm. as dark. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I can fix it. Very interesting. Wow. Oh. Take the highlights and we'll make them a little redder. And the midtones make them a little greener. And the shadows make them a little bluer. Yeah. So then it kind of creates, you know, and I don't know if the light's hitting here, you know, I don't know if it'd be equally purple everywhere. It might be a little more blue over here yeah. and then there. Yeah. You know. And yeah, great job though. All right, thanks for letting me play with your painting. Oh, you're welcome. When I go out in the morning to take photographs or the evenings, the light changes so quickly. Oh my gosh, it, yeah. It can be purple at the top and blue in the bottom with this haze across the bottom like you see in this little, it's like my backyard. This is this is my muse back here, this little tree on the left. Uh, and and uh, I, I take photographs using that tree a lot, but it's um, that's just my backyard. The Silver Bell Mountains behind me, yeah. and the mountain with the yeah. yellow sky was Newman Mountain. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, um, you may have overdone it with the texture of the leaves a little bit. They become kind of redundant. Okay. You know, I can tell you're using your brush like a like a stamp tool a little bit there. Yeah. 
Yes, I lost uh, some good brush. <laughs> so just maybe trying to figure out how to make, you know, some areas a little more special, a little more broken up, but other areas, you know, where you can simplify it a little bit. But and then the sky in it, you mean? Let the sky come through? Possibly, yeah. Who knows? Um, I'd just be so it's not all texture everywhere. Okay. Um and um yeah, I'd like I I I literally don't know where the light is in this painting, where the light source is. It's mm -hmm. it was like before the sun came over the mountain. Okay. It's that yellow at the top and it's just a golden yellow and there were just a few little pinky kind of clouds. I used that actually brown pink and um, nice. that was the brown that I used in the painting. So, so then I would probably darken this again. Okay. Because if the light hasn't come across, your ground forms are generally, especially are quite a bit darker a lot of the time. And that will make the sky, because right now the sky doesn't feel that glowy and that special. Yeah, okay. Right, so it's you can have temperature shifts to make you know a warm sky and a cooler ground. But you can also have value shifts. You can also, and this ground is quite warm still. You're really, I, I know that you're, you know, live in a brown <laughs> landscape. Yeah, Lots I of warm ochres and stuff, um, burnt umbers and yellow ochres. But um, next time when you go out in the early morning before, spend a little bit of time and just go, you know, what is the difference between the ground and the sky? And what is darker? And maybe even doing where you turn it, you know, take the photo and turn it into black and white a little bit. You think that you're on to something. I think you're, you know, you got some wonderful colors and interesting subjects. But I think that, yeah, our next step is going to be kind of, okay, what is the difference? What's, you know, what, what do I warm up? What do I cool down? What do I lighten up? What do I darken? Just to help make things a little more special. I'm looking up at the painting that I was working on, and you can really see the difference in the darks and the lights um, yeah. in there. And that's, but I also have, you know, the sunrise is also striking the, the, the objects, but um, just kind of being aware of that. All right, Leslie, are you here with us still? Yep, I'm here. There you are. All right, Leslie. So are you put these up uh, half a day ago? Nice. Just, uh, trying to get ready to do a. I wanted to put some color. You know, I mean, I. I I just chose the one that you're on right now to uh that was a reference photo you showed us that and I was gonna work on that's just like a no not a no tan. It's I put the yellow um India yellow on there, but then uh and then I was gonna, you know, come over and do color on it, some color. Perfect. No, I think it's off to a great start. Um you got a nice interesting design, it's got some nice movement. And yeah, I mean, you know, when, when you come back in and lighten the sky and reflect that into the water, I think it's, I think you're going to be off to the races. I think it's going to be really nice. Um, yeah, again, when I look at this, you know, you can see the sky is, you know, darn near almost white with a little bit of color. And then the water is a little bit darker. So yeah, I think you're off to a great spot to, uh, you know, Take it, take it further in the next step. So I'm excited to see what you come up with, Leslie. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, these shapes in here, these slashes, um, you know, that I'm not quite positive what I'm supposed to be seeing in there. Um, you know, if like that's the top of pine trees, that, you know, the angles are a little bit weird. So, you know, you may want to, you know, as you're painting in with the color, start to resolve some of those things a little bit. I mean, these work as great placeholders and everything, um, but that would be probably the next kind of step as, as you're building the color, you can you know, also be you know, bringing in whatever, as much or as little detail and information as you want. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, Gail. There you are, Gail. How you doing? Oops, I think you got you muted there. Yeah, good. All right. I see some really good starts going on here. I moved the sun down, so I redid that one this morning. I redid oh. that one this morning, so it's the top one. 
Oh, okay, great. Yeah, two minutes. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, these are lovely. I think these are going to be really beautiful. Are you planning to keep painting into them and adding color and stuff? Yeah, I'm going to add color over the top. Great. I think you're off to a really good spot, uh, place. I think these are going to be really beautiful and glowy and interesting. And are you going to bring a lot of grays across this? On this one, I am. Yeah. That's this, sky, this sky was gray and yellow. Right. On the reference photo, purple. Perfect. I can't wait to see what you do. I, I don't have any feedback on this one. You know, I'm just kind of like, I'm excited to see what you do. Um, and then this one, okay, pretty great. Um, I'm feeling a little bit awkward about some of these. I, I can't tell. The, if angle. Yeah, the, the, uh, the angles are wrong. I've been kind of futzing with it on and off during class. And I think I need to bring the one on the um, left where your cursor is. That needs to come down because the sizes across the top are too equal. There you go. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, and then... And then that needs to be cleaned up. Now, I've been futzing with it a little bit off and on during class. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what you do for uh, next week. Thank you. Gotta wait for it to dry. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, make sure. <laughs> uh, Don, all right. How you doing, Don? I'm good. Great. I'm just seeing, oh, you've been posting like crazy in the last little bit here. <laughs> wow, you got a whole bunch of different images going. Man, four of them? Well, I was trying to work on the ones taken from some of the one, uh, the black and whites that I did last week and then just trying to, with some underpainting colors and just rubbing out the values a little bit. So yeah. I use different colors because it's a new technique to me and I'm just trying to experiment with it. So um, didn't try to get too finished with it. I just kind of wanted to see the difference between the bluer ones and the redder ones. And the blue ones are sort of turning a little nocturnal. So I I'm kind of was planning on going back in and doing a little more color, but uh, ran into a time issue with the grandbabies. No, <laughs> so are, so that's, my, that's my this week project. Yeah, but wonderful experiments. And I really like, like, it's like you did one warm one, one cool one, and here you got warms and cools. And when you come in with the color, I mean, you can be as transparent or as opaque as you want. You know, you could paint and literally not see any of this if you just cover it with thick, opaque paint, or you can, you know, let a lot of this kind of show through. Um, this one feels like it's definitely leaning to the right. So you might kind of want to reestablish your horizon line and kind of figure out where things are in conjunction with that. But I sure do love the glow and, the, you know, you're getting some really neat effects. I hopefully you've had a great time doing these. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of fun. Very good. Yeah, they're all interesting in their own different ways. And they're all they definitely have a poeticness to them and a spontaneity to them. So I'll be curious. Yeah, if you, you know, are these little tiny guys? Uh, they're about six by eight. It, I, I just take a canvas sheet and uh, divide it into four panels and, you know, try to uh, not, not like I say, make anything too precious, just sort of experiment with it. And then um, now going back in with the color again, it's all kind of, it's a newer technique to me. So I, I'm a little nervous, but I'll, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, play, experiment, have fun. And I'm excited to see what happens here. All right, Cheryl, how you doing? I'm doing okay. That one on the top is just a funny little picture. So <laughs> that's all. I'm gonna actually do that one in gouache of my of those little frogs. <laughs> super those funny. are my daughter's frogs. Uh, that's so funny. It was just funny. Um, this was a little, I did the thumbnail, about three by six sort of size. Nice. Of the Easy. final thing I wanted to paint and I wanted to go big because you said earlier in the class we could go big. So I went do it was doing this one 12 by 24. Woo. Nice. Wow, very nice. It's lovely. I gosh, I love these uh really just fine lines. Are you almost using like a squeegee to get these back or how'd you I 
I just use, I just put a piece of cloth or on my finger, a little turpentine on it and, um, and, and made the lines. Um, this is really neat. Do you know the artist Kim English? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it has elements of some of their work in it. It's really nice. It's got a, a really nice glow and so how far are you? Are you uh, working a lot more? Are you going to keep it nice and kind of clean and graphic almost like this? Oh, I'm going to I'm going to work some more on it. I'm looking forward to going back in and um I mean I, I did the Indian yellow underpainting first of, or tone tone the canvas with Indian yellow and then I came on with just these sort of kind of washy, strokey color fields. Um and and rubbed rub you know rubbed up rub stuffed out actually all the light stuff you know I just I just rubbed out and I'm look I'm waiting waiting for it to dry and then I'm gonna do some uh, washes use some of those transparent colors to do some washes and I'll probably there's there's a little bit more that I could I mean there's like the uh, legs I I didn't really put in all the metal work that goes down below I might I'll probably add a little bit more of that sure sure have you done this technique before I mean I've done I've done rub out before um I'm but it's a little bit di different because I wanted to add that's why I took your class with because you you do all those great transparent washes and so I wanted to you know figure out how to add a little bit more of that into my work perfect Lovely. All right. And I very much appreciate you. Oh, I, this piece is just glorious. I love that. Gouache just makes the neatest little textures and draws and drags. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was Oswald Beach, which is just, if you haven't been there, it's it's just south of Cannon Beach. Yep, that's what I wrote. <laughs> uh, this yeah. is Smuggler's Cove is the name of the little area on the left side of Oswald Beach. Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Okay. Yep, I've painted here a couple times. It's lovely. Yeah, you can just sit back in the trees up high and paint. Yeah, I've painted there a bunch of times too. Yeah, it's a really cool place. Very cool. Yeah, and I like that you can get away if it's a little bit windy. You can just tuck back into the trees there at the entrance, the park entrance. To the mm -hmm. beach. Nicely done. Um, yeah, gouache is just so versatile. Such a great thing for plain air and Anyways, I wanted to um, also just show everybody this. I appreciate your posting this. So um, this, I actually know this exact place. It's not far from Dragonfire Gallery, right? Right. Mm -hmm. up, uh, walking to the beach from Dragonfire Gallery, which is where I show at the coast. And uh, I just love these trees. Um, they're so interesting. I love the combination and the interesting shapes. And yeah, it's a hard place to photograph because the shadows versus the light, you know, and then you get this gorgeous how the sun will set, you know, depending on the season, but you looks like you caught it perfect right down the middle here. Um, and yeah, you see that this would be definitely a paintable image, but this would be a very difficult photo and the light is doing weird things. You got, you know, little glares, you've got the light does this weird amorphous, almost cyclops shape thing. Um, and so you know, it. we can definitely use this as a reference. We, this is just an example where you don't copy the photo completely, right? And so then I asked you, I was like, you know, do you have more photos? And you did, and I appreciate you because I want to show the difference. So if you let it, the camera just focus into the sky, what it does is it takes all the shadow areas and just takes all the information out, right? So you got the colors in the sky and you no longer have that big halo around the sun. And so this is great for the sky reference and, you know, you're getting crisper shapes around the trees. And what I would do constantly is I'm always taking multiple photos and either combining them on Photoshop or I'll just print them up or have them all on the screen or whatever. So I'm oftentimes painting from multiple photos because a single photo very rarely, especially when we're using our iPhones or, you know, our phones versus a, you know, DSLR camera and setting it up properly. Um, just doesn't get all the information. So within these three photos, you've pretty much gotten everything you need to make a successful painting of these. Are you thinking you want to do a painting of this scene? Oh, yeah, at some point. Oh, of course, well, I, I say that with a lot of my photos, but <laughs> I'd really like <laughs> to do that one. <laughs> I think you should do it. 
I think you should do it. I think you should do it now. <laughs> yeah, I think I should too. <laughs> or maybe for our next painting after you finish your um, tree and stove there. Right, I got to let that dry for a while. So I could start the other one. There you go. There you go. Phew, we made it and only 41 minutes late. Um, you guys are awesome. Oops, there's that awkward teenage painting. Uh, oh, wrong screen. Camera fell down. And there's me in way too close up. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for all your time. And thanks for letting me play with the acrylics. Um, I know for some of you oil painters, that maybe was a little bit weird. Um, but uh, I hopefully it was worthwhile, informational. And um, anyways, I had a great time today. So thank you all very much. I'm very happy with all the work that's coming out. And I'm even more than, you know, beautiful paintings. I'm excited that you guys are experimenting, pushing yourselves, trying new things. And I'm very excited. Next week, we will be talking about um, design armatures and different things we can lay on. And I want you guys to already be thinking about what's the next painting that you want to be doing for the final three weeks. Okay. Um, what does that mean, design design armatures? What does that mean? Let's see In a I, nutshell, I don't want to make us go later or anything, but <laughs> that's something I can look up on your site or something, or just look up. You, we can just you can just Google it, and then he'll go over it next week. Okay, great. Okay, I've thank you. Hand, I've already got them in the handouts. Okay, thank you. Thank Towards you. Towards the bottom, so like there's the steel yard, right? So you're just kind of looking at these different design elements. Um, and then, you know, I use the S-curve all the time. Um, I also like to use different, you know, balance or counterbalance. Um, yeah, again, we'll talk about these. We'll go through them, but you're more than welcome to look through this. You can also look it up. Um, this kind of spiraling is kind of what I was talking about in the painting that I'm working on, as well as kind of this. And a lot of times the paintings will have multiple armatures in them or, and yeah. Lots of fun and interesting things to do, but sometimes you just, when you're looking at a scene and it's so difficult, it's good to just go, okay, what can I, like right here, I used this element today in today's painting as well. So we know, don't see it. Have, We're not seeing it, what you're talking about. Michael. Oh, have I not been sharing it at all? No. <laughs> just me here. Okay, so design elements. So like the uh, diagonal line, Anyways, there's a couple pages under notes and handouts, and I should probably try and find more of them. This is by Edgar Payne, um, his book on land, this landscape design. But yeah, you can just look at all these different ones that he's talking about, and we'll go into them in some detail next week. We talked about the steel yard today a little bit, and there it is. The S-curve is the one I use all the time. Circular can be great. Um, anyways, that's what design armatures are. It's just kind of, you know, an armature, like when you're doing uh, sculpting, like with clay, and you just make a little wire, like figure, and then you would put the clay over it. That's kind of what an armature. All right. Fantastic, you guys. Um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Hopefully, I'll be a little more tan after going to Hawaii for a week. And um, yeah. Any last questions, parting I words? I have one question, Micah. I have one question. Please. Uh, how do you paint on the old oil painting? Um, Like to cover them completely or to start? Yeah, to cover them completely to a start new painting. Uh, I mean, a lot of times I'll take them outside, put a mask on and sand them down a little bit. Uh-huh. And then I use oil prime um, by Gamblin oil primer. Okay. Yeah, you can't really put gesso over oil paintings very well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Have see. a great time in Hawaii. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna uh, put a link to the oil prime on the uh, Padlet. Right okay. Now. Thank you so much. Great. We'll All be right. able to get the uh, we'll be able to get the video link of this class by tomorrow or something. 
Yeah, I hope so. I leave it like three in the morning tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get it all downloaded quickly. So wish Where me luck. Be Where safe. Are Where in right. Hawaii are you going? What's that? Where are you going in Hawaii? Uh, we're going to Maui. So oh wow, uh, okay. Yeah, we're actually going to be outside of Lahaina, so it'll be interesting. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean it's a ways outside of Lahaina, but the house got the house that we are staying in was uh, within a thousand yards of it was the fire. So wow, oh, yeah. wow. It's definitely going to look different, but it's uh, luckily a self-sustaining home with its own power and its own water and everything else and everything else. And part of we'll hopefully be doing some kind of a project in Lahaina because I'm going with a number of people who are um, work in social services and different things like that. So. And actually, some um, architects as well. It will be interesting to hear you report back on the progress that's happening there. Yeah, I know. I don't know how close we'll actually be able to get because I heard most of the roads are closed and stuff. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I was super sad because we were there about nine months ago, my wife and I in Lahaina. And uh, so it was really tough to just think of all the restaurants we were in and the stores we were in and the right. and the oh, art galleries and all the people's work amazing yeah just yeah. Those, and that gorgeous gorgeous tree uh-huh so, like growing back though yeah have a great time thank you for a great class thank you guys take care thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye everyone